Reading from Shemad Bhagavatam, still from the 10th canto, 30th chapter, text 11. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vaiha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vaiha. Om Namo Bhagavate Which were smeared with a kumkum from the breast of his girlfriend uh, when he embraced her. So here, of course, we just go ahead to where we read it before him. She lives in the Swami's purport. So, of course, that's indirectly referring to Shimati Radharani. Everybody remembers that? In addressing, oh, right, so continue. In addressing the wife of the deer, they praise the doe's eyes. Patni refers to a wife who takes part in sacrifice with her husband. And the husband is called what? Patni. Patni and Patni. It's actually nice. Actually, Prabhupada said the uh, wife should never refer to the husband with his name. Should always refer to him as Pati Day. <laughs> yeah, you because know, it's actually it's not it's not romantic, it's just not sweet when you just refer to someone by their name, right? So you say Pati. No, you say Priya. The wife is called Priya, which means dear. It sets a different mood. When you call the wife something else, hey, Durga, <laughs> where's my prasada? <laughs> it's not the same mood, is it? He says, Priya, where's my prasada? This is much sweeter. Anyway, so, and the uh, husband is called, actually, the husband is sometimes called Swami, which means master. Can't say that now. Uh, Swami or Paji Dev, like this. Anyway, uh, so hmm. the deer participates in the sacrifice and his wife is addressed as Patni. Thus, the wife of the deer, the seer, is praised. One thing is interesting like in the Vedic sacrifices, uh, <coughs> one actually had to have his wife next to him to perform a sacrifice. That was the standard. <clears throat> I remember in the early days of the movement, you know, when you had a grasp of doing a sacrifice, his wife would sit right next to him. And if you read the Ramayana, when Lord Ram uh, sent Sita Devi away and he had to do all these sacrifices, like the Rajasuya sacrifice, does anyone know what he did? Because his wife wasn't there, what did he do? He made a deity of his wife. Because that's an essential thing to have one's wife with him, with you when you're doing the sacrifice. Uh, and if you're a sannyasi, don't worry about it. <laughs> this is praise for the doe's, go, the doe's good fortune. By mentioning the beloved, there is praise for the seer, the doe, and the object seen, Krishna and Radha. <coughs> Their limbs took on extraordinary features when they were together. This is praise for the eye, as in the statement, great bliss for the eye spread out. Hmm. He does not fail to be with her, Achuta. In other words, that's another, that's actually really interesting. Krishna never forgets Radharani, so he's Achuta. And also Krishna never fails to be with her. He's also Achuta. And Krishna never fails to think of us, too. He's Achuta. So there's many different meanings of the word Achuta, which is really, this is praise for that assertion. The word va, plural, indicates that not only the doe, but her companions of equal stature. Thus there's praise for the seals, that means the, those who see. The garland of kunda flowers, white and beautiful by nature, by nature, so, is praised as the object seen. It was tinged with kumkuma <coughs> from association with his beloved. Kula patahe indicates praise for the lover seen. Iha here is praise for the place receiving the fragrance. It's a little complicated. 
excuse me. The wind combining with the fragrance blows everywhere. The word Ganda combining with its modifiers indicates praise for it. Now, by reading this, you can understand how intelligent Jiva Goswami is. Because even when it's translated, it's hard for us to understand <laughs> what he means. I mean, Jiva Goswami is the most intelligent scholar of all time, besides Krishna. Uh, now, finally, Sanatana Goswami's commentary. <clears throat> the earth will not speak since, remember they asked, <clears throat> they asked the earth about where Krishna was. The earth will not speak since, like Tulsi, she has the Lord's affection and thus is a competitor. Or she does not want to speak. <coughs> don't worry, I don't have the virus. It's not my coffee. Uh, they then inquire from the doe, believing that she is a friend, a wife of the deer. You know about suffering and separation from a lover. Therefore, please tell us in great distress. Oh, please tell us. In great distress in the distance, they see only one doe. However, drisham and va is in the plural. Out of respect for her, since Krishna has approached her. Hmm. It's a little technical here. Maybe we'll skip this. It's a little te technical for class. It's going to be very hard for everyone to understand what I'm saying. So I'm not going to continue this. Let's go on to the next verse. Text 12. Vahum Priyam Sa Upadaya Grihita Padmo Raman Ramanu Jastu Lasikale Kular Matanathai Matanathai Anvi Amana Hivas Tadava Pranamam Kim Vabinanda Tikcharan Pranaya Valokahai. So, the translation is O oh, trees, we see that you are bowing down when the younger brother of Rama walked by here, followed by intoxicated bees swarming around the Tulasi Mandris decorating his garland. Did he acknowledge your obeisances with his affectionate glances? He must have been resting his arm on the shoulder of his beloved and carrying a lotus flower in his free hand. Who is the younger brother of Balaam? Nobody knows? They got it. Let's make sure you're listening. So just picture this in your mind. When you hear this description, you should actually integrate it into your heart, you know, Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayanakata. Uh, and just visualize what it means to have Krishna uh, resting his arm on the shoulder of Radharani. Pretty cool. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> and then his other, and, and his other arm uh, carrying the lotus flower, you know, twir twirling the lotus flower like this. Wow. Where was his flute? Does anyone know? Yep. In his belt, yeah. So you should picture this in your mind. Just make it, you know, just close your eyes and visualize this Radha and Krishna, Krishna with his arm resting on Radharani and twirling the flute in his right hand. And it, I'm twirling the lotus flower and the flute resting in his belt. Pretty nice. Nice visualization. You should do these visualizations. It's actually very important. Whenever you hear these verses, or, or read any Krishna Kata, you should actually visualize what's happening. The gopis saw that the trees, bent over with abundant fruits and flowers, were offering obeisances to Lord Krishna. This is the purport, so. Uh, the gopis supposed Krishna must have recently passed that way since the trees were still bowing down. 
because Sri Krishna had left the gopis to go with his favorite consort. Who's that? Who's Krishna's favorite consort? Radharani. <laughs> uh, they were jealous and thus imagined that he had become fatigued from his loving affairs and was resting his left arm on the soft shoulder of his beloved. Like I said, left arm. The gopis further imagined that Krishna must have been carrying a blue lotus in his right hand to drive away the bees, eagerly trying to attack his beloved's face after smelling its aroma. In other words, he was taking the lotus and driving the bees away. Anyway, the scene was so beautiful that the gopis imagined. So here the gopis are doing the same thing. They're imagining. They're not seeing. They're imagining. So that's the proper use of imagination in Krishna consciousness. Hmm. That the, the reason devotees are actually sometimes, you know, sometimes I see the devotees doing service around the temple and they look not so happy. Well, they're not hearing enough or using their imagination and their minds to think of Krishna. And you know, see people moping around. You know, moping? The sad faces. <laughs> you know, if you don't engage in the hearing process, then what's the nectar? Because the whole process, the ninefold process of devotional service, begins with what? Shravana. Prabhupada said if people don't read regularly, they'll go away. Even if their bodies are here, they'll go away. In other words, the bodies won't go away. Because you are wherever you're thinking of. You can be in Bhagavatam class and then be asleep or whatever. Or at your computer simultaneously, even without externally doing it. Prabhupada said you travel at the speed of the mind. So it's really important to engage the mind. You know, like we hear, Savai Mana, Krishna, Padara Vindayo. What does that mean exactly? It means engage the mind completely and also to engage your emotions in Krishna consciousness. Just like we were talking the other day with Sindhu Nittai about chakras. You know, some people like who perform kundalini yoga, they have this process to open up the chakra. You know, they actually, it's like a snake, they picture. Like that. Unfortunately, what they do is open up the chakras and the ghosts come. <laughs> it's true. I mean, actually, they improperly open up the chakra. So if we take up Krishna consciousness properly, you're actually, you should be opening your heart chakra while you're doing it, right? I mean, if you're not feeling ecstasy hearing this description here, something's wrong. Isn't it? Something's wrong with you. If you think, oh, this is just boring, you know. That means you're just hearing with your intellect. You understand? Just hearing with the intellect. Oh, yes. This is with the gopis. He's, this is with Radharani, hand here. Love his father here. That's all. But you, it's something, you know, it's, if you're not feeling bliss, I mean, you're in the wrong movement, you know, better, better join the Mormons or something like that. At least you'll have a better job. So, uh, so the scene was so beautiful, I'll read this again, that the gopis imagined that the maddened bees had left the Tulasi garden to follow the two lovers. So Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur explains, the gopis discussing further clues that Krishna was right there began to speak about the trees bending over with fruit and flowers as if bending down to Krishna. Oh trees, did Krishna wandering here acknowledge or not with an affectionate glance your obeisance with offerings of fruits and flowers, your offspring 
in your hands. So the fruits and flowers of the offspring, you know, the children of the trees. Very poetic. Uh, but how could there be an opportunity of his lovingly glancing upon saintly persons like you? With envy, they said, this brother of Balaram. Now, that, let's understand the psychology here. When you are angry with someone, how do you refer to them? Indirectly. Like, for example, if you're angry with your child, you will go to your husband, if you happen to be the wife, and you'll say, your child did this. <laughs> right? But if you're pleased, you'll say, Krishna, you know, my child did it. So here they're saying, they're, they, they, they're just like so upset at Krishna, they're not even saying Krishna. They're just saying, the younger brother, Balaram. You understand the psychology there? It's actually, try to understand, every, everything they say is, means something. And they say, the, young, the brother of Balaram, who is well known for his intoxicated love affairs, who must be similarly intoxicated, put his left arm on the shoulder. You know, there's an angry mood. Remember, it's an angry mood. And this is good. If you have to be angry, you should be angry at Krishna. Put his left arm on the shoulders of his weak beloved, using it as a pillow. Due to fatigue after loving exchanges, and held in his right hand a blue lotus in order to fend off the bees swarming around because of the fragrance of his beloved face. His beloved's face. Actually, it's, it says something wrong here. Being absorbed in serving his beloved, how could he glance upon you trees? The bees have given up the tender Tulasi groves and have followed behind Krishna to this place. Therefore, we can understand that Krishna is hiding here somewhere. If that is so, should we follow the bees? No, it is improper for respectable persons to follow after intoxicated persons. You know, so this is all in the mood of anger. Isn't it? <laughs> Don't imitate that, old Krishna. And now Jiva Goswami comments, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit more erudite. Unsure when a Doe remained silent and staring, thinking she was stunned with great sorrow and seeing the pain of separation in the gopis. The sakis left the doe and seeing the trees bowing low with fruits and flowers, thinking they were offering respects. They inquired from them. In this verse, also by praising, oops, did I skip something? Oh yeah, by praising the items, they attained great joy. The meaning is this, O oh, trees, did the brother of Balaram take joy in your respects or not by showing you affectionate glances? They praised the qualities of the seers, that means you see, by indicating that the trees are the qualified objects of his mercy and affection. Why would he not acknowledge our respects? He was absorbed in sweet pastimes with his beloved. They knew this because of the fragrance. They were skillful at understanding their intimate pastimes. This is indicated in this verse by the description of Krishna resting his arm on her shoulder. The general reason for not acknowledging the trees was that he was wandering around Charan, anxious for a place for his pastimes. He always wanders around looking. What is special about today? His arm is on the shoulder of his beloved who has great affection for him. Because her shoulder is tender, he places his arm there slightly. That means very light. Upa. It's not. He has come to show her to us. Why would he not acknowledge us? He is followed by swarms of bees and he's absorbed in swinging a lotus in his right hand to prevent the bees from approaching his beloved. How can he acknowledge you? This also indicates the superb fragrance of the Tulsi plants in the pastime forest. Divya Ganda Tulasi Madhu Matahai Ali Kulai Alagu Gitam Abhishtam Maddened by the divine honey-like aroma of the Tulsi flowers on the garland Krishna wears, swarms of bees sing loudly for him. For him. That's from 1035.10. 10. 
in the Bhagavad Gita. He is followed by bees blind with intoxication from drinking the nectar, the special fragrance which arises when he presses against her body, that is to protect her from the bees, is shown. This indicates praise for the Tulasi. This is, it's a little complicated here. So the, he, he ends with, these footprints of that special gopi greatly disturb us. <laughs> of all the gopis, she alone was taken away to a secluded place where she enjoined the lips of Krishna. That's from Bhagavatam 1030, 30, which we'll get to eventually. <clears throat> it's uh, Sanatana. Sanatana Goswami basically is saying the same thing, so we'll skip through there. Same thing. So, text 13. <coughs> <coughs> Prichat <coughs> material body. I was listening to a class this morning, and Prabhupada was talking. Uh, the Prabhupada the devotees asked Prabhupada the question, "What about all the doctors that are curing all the diseases?" And Prabhupada said, "There is no cure." And Prabhupada said, gave, he said, they may cure one disease, but then they'll get another disease. There is no cure. Prichate malata bahun apyalishta vanaspatahe nunam tat karaja sprishta vibrat yut hula kanyaho. Let us ask these creepers about Krishna. Even though they are embracing the arms of their husband, this tree, they certainly must have been touched by Krishna's fingernails. Since out of joy, they are manifesting eruptions of their skin. So purport. The gopis reason that the creepers would not show signs of rapture merely by physical contact with their husband, a tree. Thus, the gopis concluded that although the creepers were embracing the strong limbs of their husband, they must have been touched by Lord Krishna as he moved through the forest. You see, and the purports by the acharyas are basically the same thing. Text 14. Ityunmattavacho uh, gopya Krishna Veshana Kattadaha Lila Bhagavata Stasta Ayanu Chakrushta Ratmikaha Having spoken these words, the gopis distraught, that means very unhappy, depressed, from searching for Krishna, began to act out his various pastimes, fully absorbed in him. In thoughts of him, sorry. <clears throat> and Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur has a purport here. Stunned by bliss, they cannot speak, they concluded. Asking such questions to inanimate objects, that means objects that don't uh, move, like trees and plants, creepers and tulsi, shows the internal love of the gopis and is a sign of unmata, that's madness. Searching for Krishna while speaking in this way, the gopis could not find him. Some gopis among them gave this advice. By imitating the form and activities of Krishna, I will now show myself as Krishna, and in this way, moment, momentarily, you and I will get relief from our extreme pain. So that also means that we should be feeling separation from Krishna and we can get relief by hearing about Krishna. As all Krishna's pastimes gradually come to memory, came to memory, with their minds absorbed in Krishna, Tudatmika, they began to enact those pastimes, including the killing of Putana. Yogamaya took the form of a gopi 
and played the parts involving unfavorable moods in order to complete this pastime. <laughs> the gopis played the favorable roles. In other words, when you're doing Krishna's pastimes, uh, when they were doing Krishna's pastimes, the gopis did not play the demons. The demons were played by Yoga Maya. Something new, isn't it? That's very interesting. Uh, well. Okay, let's go ahead to the next verse. The Kasya Chet Putana Yantya Krishna Yant Jappi Hotstanam Toka Yipa Rudachanya Padahan Shakatayatim one gopi imitated Putana, while another acted like infant Krishna and pretended to suck her breast. Another gopi, crying in imitation of infant Krishna, <coughs> kicked a gopi who was taking the role of the cart demon uh, Shakata Sura. And Vishnu Chakravati Thakur explains, the imitation of Krishna's pastimes is described in four verses one gopi acted as Putana and another as Krishna, pretending to drink milk from her breast. One gopi cried like a baby and kicked another gopi imitating the cart. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Let's go to the next verse. <clears throat> Vajjayatta jaharanyahum eko krishna arvavavanam avingayam asikapyam gri karshanti gosha nishpanahai One gopi took the role of Trinavarta and carried away another who was acting like infant Krishna while yet another gopi crawled about her ankle bells tinkling as she pulled her feet. <laughs> uh, purport, the gopi started imitating all of Chris, Sri Krishna's pastimes, beginning from his earliest activities as a baby. That's the whole purport. Uh, and Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, it's just description, descriptive here. Text 17, Krishna Ramayate Dvaitu Gopayam Jascha Vatsayatim hanti chanyam Tatraika tu bakayatim Two gopis acted like Ravan and Krishna in the midst of the several others who took the role of coward boys. One gopi enacted Krishna's killing of the demon Vatsasura represented by another gopi and a pair of gopis acted out the killing of Vakasura. So there's an interesting story about Vatsasura. Vatsasura, of course, is a calf demon. I mean, <coughs> this is going back to when Krishna killed him. <coughs> so the calf demon appeared and Krishna killed him and the coward boy said to Krishna, we're not going near you. This is similar to the Radha Kun story. They said, because you have killed a calf and you are sinful, you have to go to the Ganges to purify yourself. And Krishna said, I'm not going to go to the Ganges. And then he created the Ganges from his mind. And that is called the Manasa Ganga in Braj. And uh, this Manasa Ganga, many pastimes took place in this Manasa Ganga. Uh, one pastime is that one time Nanda Maharaj wanted to go to the Ganges and Krishna said you should not leave Braj and Krishna manifested Ganga Devi coming out of the monks of Ganga. Another time uh, the gopis wanted to cross the Manasa Ganga to bring their milk products uh, to Govinda Kund for a sacrifice and Krishna uh, took the part of an old boatman because there were no other boats around so Krishna made believe he was a really old boatman Frankly, 90 years old. And so the gopis were trying to cross, and they found this old boatman who was actually Krishna, and they didn't know. And they said to Krishna, or the old boatman, can you take us across? And the old boatman said, of course. 
get in my boat, young girls. And they got in with all their milk products. And as soon as they got out, like a few meters out, he said, I have no energy. I need to eat something. So they gave him the milk products. And Krishna ate the milk products. And then he said to the gopis, he said, now I'm so full, I can't row anymore. Actually, if I get a massage, it will be better. Can you massage me? And the gopi said, yes, we'll grab your limbs and throw you in the water. So get, row get rowing. <laughs> so then uh, they went out a little further. And uh, basically they were, the boat was leaking. And Krishna said, we've got to throw some stuff off the boat. And so the gopis threw their milk products and you know, other things off the boat. Krishna said, it's just too heavy still. You've got to throw your clothes off too. And then the gopis said, we're going to throw you off the boat. So just get rowing, you rascal. And so Krishna was rowing, and then there was a storm, and the whole boat was going from side to side. <coughs> <clears throat> and they were getting getting very, very worried, and then Radharani spied that this boatman had a flute in his belt, and she realized it was Krishna. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> it's a nice story. <clears throat> so that's all around the Bakasura's Batsa story. story, story. <clears throat> and the Bakasura story, I mean, that's another story, that's the, uh, like a stork, the duck or something like that. And Krishna entered in the mouth, and he bifurcated the beak of Bakasura. Anyway, wonderful story. So text 18. Ahi, uh, ahuya dura gayatvat Krishna stam anuvartatim Venam kvanantim Kridantim Anyas sham santi sadviti when one gopi <coughs> perfectly imitated how Krishna would call the cows who had wandered far away, how he would play with his flute, and how he would engage in various sports, the others congratulated her with exclamations of, well done, well done. So Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur explains, one gopi acted like Krishna, played the flute to call the cows who had wandered far off and having them follow after him. It's pretty descriptive here. Text 19. Kashanchit svabhujam yasya chalayantya purananu krishna ham pasyata gatim lalita mititan manaha Another gopi, her mind fixed on Krishna, walked around with her arm resting on the shoulder of a friend and declared, I am Krishna. Just see how gracefully I move. <laughs> and Vishnu Chakravati Thakur explains in a very short explanation. In imitating the pastimes of catching each other, coward boys, by the strength of the Sanchari Bhava. Sanchari Bhava is the, we described there's 33 of those in the previous class, that's the Yavachari Bhava. That means emotions that are intermittent, that arise without any prediction, that you have no control over that are really intense. Mm -hmm. So the strength of the Sanchari Baba of the Unmada, of Unmada, that means the craziness of the Sanchari Baba, and the absorption in the pastimes, the gopis lost their own identity and attained a oneness with Krishna. This is described in four verses. I am Krishna and, and go around with my arm on the shoulders of Subal, see my graceful actions. They didn't actually become Krishna but because they were so much in love with Krishna, for all intents and purposes, they acted like Krishna. It was like an actor. You know, a similar thing is, when I was young, I took up acting in the university, among many things I studied, among many useless things. And there's this whole school of acting called the Stanislavski School of Acting. Anyone's heard of that before? No? It's called method acting. Method acting is <clears throat> you actually, for all intents and purposes, you become the person. Before the play, you actually 
spend a few minutes just getting into the person. You study the person. It's like we had Radha Rani. She tells Sundari, play Radha Rani. You remember that? Does everybody remember that? You don't remember that. Don't remember that was Radha Astami. Last year. You don't remember. Nobody remembers that. She played Radha Rani in the Bumblebee pastime. Now you remember? Oh, you're young. You're supposed to have good brains. So she was, she was really, you remember right now? Thank you. So she got into the mood of Radharani so much that for all intents and purposes, she was channeling Radharani. It's called channeling. Of course, the, the material world, channeling means like ghost or something like that. You channel your grandfather. And he tells you, why did you join the Hare Krishna movement? You should have worshipped uh, Ganesh instead. So, uh, but anyway, so you can actually channel someone by knowing them. That doesn't mean you become them. You can assume their characteristics. Uh, and so she was doing this so well, she actually was in the mood of Radharani. Right? Even nowadays when I see her, I call her Radharani. Don't I? I call her Radharani because I just remember that. She was so much in the mood, I was crying. She was, you know, the song of the bumblebee? Rama uh, Gita from the Bhagavatam? Just, wow, oh my God. You know, so, that's actually an actor. Another thing, like Prabhupada also talked about how when he was young, he played some of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Uh, in a professional play, he had a professional playwright, I mean, director. Direct, and they took a whole year to do this play about Lord Chaitanya. Does anyone remember what part Prabhupada played? I remember, but I'm just asking you. Prabhupada played Advaita Charya. And the audience was crying. So that's a good actor. When you actually enter into the mood. Of course, in the material realm, they do that. And unfortunately, they end up getting married to the person that they have the movie with. Because they identify so much with that. I remember there was one devotee in a Bollywood film who played Ram. But he didn't get too much into his character because later on he came to our Los Angeles temple and was smoking a cigarette. And the devotees went and they said, Ram, why are you smoking? He said, I'm not Ram! <laughs> So we didn't get into his thing. But also, it's, it's utilized, this whole uh, point of role playing and uh, channeling someone else is actually utilized in conflict resolution. That let's say if you have two people with a conflict, you know, like a husband and wife, they're yelling at each other, you don't understand me, what do you mean? I do everything for you, I give you money. What do you mean? Anyway, so you have a conflict like that. And so they, each person takes the other person's part. And they're able to understand, literally. It's one of the exercises that I do with empathic communication. They're able to understand the other person's uh, moods, desires, needs, etc., like that. And it really helps. So, so what the gopis are doing here is actually getting so much into Krishna. They've studied Krishna that they're for all intents and purposes, they're channeling Krishna. And when devotees put on plays, like Prabhupada, here's another point. I'll just finish with this, because it's, it's an interesting point. Like Prabhupada would sometimes uh, visit the New York temple. And in the New York temple, we had a group of devotees who were very expert in, uh, in drama. They were called the Vaikuntha players. Maybe you heard about that before. And when I, when I got those Loi Taksha, probably loved theater performances because we actually had a theater in the New York Temple, uh, in the old temple in the middle of Manhattan. And probably would sit there and watch and he said, this is better than the books. I'm not saying 
that we should just do that instead of read books. But Prabhupada himself was very much appreciative of how the devotees would get into this. And they would do the Ramayam. I remember one of my godmothers would play the part of Robin. It was, so these drama, Prabhupada really liked dramas. And one of my godbrothers, who passed away, Vishnu John Maharaj, practically speaking, every Sunday they had a drama at the temple. And everybody loved it. I mean, every Sunday was like a festival. It wasn't just someone sitting down telling you you weren't your body for the 10 millionth time. Isn't it? It gets, it gets dry after a while. Now, not your body. Your body's a bag of stool. <laughs> You're going to die. It's your world. It's a place of misery. Uh, you devotees, you know, is that all you talk about? So, so every Sunday was actually just like <clears throat> going to the theater. And the Bhagavatam came alive. So. And that was Vishnu John Maharaj, who also played a flute like Krishna. And he led Kirtan like a Gandhara. Prabhupada said he was like a Gandhara. So, anyway, so, so it's nice when the devotees do those things, but it has to be done expertly. And it, Prabhupada, what Prabhupada didn't like was when people laughed at a serious role because some devotee was not expert in playing it or some devotee played it in a comical way. You know, like, like these pastimes of Radha Krishna are not comical. So it should be done in very serious, just like when, when the uh, song of the bumblebee was being played. It wasn't comical, it was just very serious and deep. And you can actually picture it. So anyway, so this is what's happening here. That's what's called oneness. They became one with Krishna, like the actor becomes one with the person who he has depicted. Okay, time to greet the deities. If Jari will make her entrance. So, any questions or comments about these things? Questions, comments, arguments, problems? It's very interesting. To no? Okay, I guess we should end. All glories to the Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Jai.